G'day folks, Rich Buddhas from Datacom, Christchurch, New Zealand, with a overview of buttons and icons in Power Apps. Um, just showing a few different things you can do with them. So you've got your regular um, blocky, squarey, or bloggy buttons, round ones, cornered edges, tab type ones, ones with icons in them um, that transition and change colour, um, and then ones that do more cool stuff as well. Um, so, quick overview of each one, um, how you can put that in your app, um, and we go down in complexity, well, these are all really pretty simple, and then we go down in complexity right at the bottom. So, overview of these, super simple, um, inserting a button, insert button from the menu, easy peasy, colour it, shape it as you want, to get a round button, just make sure you've got your height and your width the same, and then change your border radius to 100. Okay, now. If you just look at this piece of the menu, you only see border radius as one particular field. But you can actually change the border radius on all four corners of your buttons if you want to, which I've done here. Uh, so for a tabbed type button, all you want to do is go into the drop down of the controls, also the elements of your app or control, sorry, um, and then you'll find border radius. So radius, bottom, radius, bottom, radius, top, top, left, right, left, right, left, right. So all you want to do is just change the top left, top right to something that works for you. 25 is pretty good. Um, and if you change and make sure you've got your water radius for your bottom left down at a zero, then you're going to have something that looks like a tab. Easy peasy. Um, putting a button together with an icon to make it look a bit different is also simple. Just to make it a group, first of all. Um, first, you want to make sure, and then put an action on the group for both things, so that if somebody clicks the icon, they're going to get the same activity happen as what we have if they click the button. Um, just going to remember that if you're going to just put an image on a button, um, then yeah, need to make sure you've got that covered. You can also just put a regular image onto into a Power App or some text and have a launch um, or on select based on that as well if you want to, with like an underscore, underline something. But it's yeah, people work with buttons on on devices generally. Um, to have icons inside of round buttons. Again, you can make a button background to be blank um, and then give it a, I've got a variable here. Um, I could have a context variable. This is a global variable um, just because I'm being a bit lazy. Um, but on clicking each of these, we set a variable called my nav icon to be a different number. And then the background of each of these three buttons is controlled via the variable. So if the my nav icon equals one, then we give it this blue color, else we make it have no value. Um, and all you really need for all this as well is to have that last of the four digits to be zero, because that's your, your opacity on your RGBA values. You could have any other numbers you want in there, but having it look like that can sometimes help to make you see that, yep, that's going to be completely blank. Okay, um, so yeah, as you click through on this guy, the buttons change colour. And I, what I've done there is I've kept the the hover on my buttons. Well, you'll notice if you do put an icon over the top of a button, the, the hovering of the button doesn't change, but you can change that as well if you wanted to. Having it okay, clicking the button, it's just going to do it. But you're not really going to get past the hover. If you want to do it to make it do something a little more, you could put that into a gallery. Have your three buttons in a gallery um, coming from a control. Um, and then you'll be able to do this couple of gallery transitions you can have. Um, to make it look like you've, you're hovering over, like a little move slightly, like in and out type thing, um, it's bigger or smaller. Um, that's one way you can do it. But otherwise, you, you're going to have your icon sitting um, possibly behind. So if I move this guy back um, behind um, my button, because my button's um, center back. So at the moment, I've got a hover. So what I could do here would be to click my button, go down to my hover, and then I'll change my hover color. Let's make that 0.1. And as I hover now over it, then I'm going to see a little bit of something change. You know, that's kind of something I could do if I wanted to. Or um, because I've got a blue background um, and a whitish type icon we could do that again um, let's 
make it. Oops. Now I need to change my editor. Just pause that one second. All right, I'm too busy messing about. Let's do that properly. All right. Let's try that. Same sort of thing. Um, it's better you can do it that way as well. You don't need to have the color fade. You just have a different color. Um, and that's a cyan type color, this blue here. Um, that it will just sort of hover over the, the icon, but again, because the button's in front, then it looks like it's going. So if you have your icon behind it, but just don't have a, a strong um, opacity over it, otherwise you won't see the icon that you've got going over the top of it. All right. Okay, so for transitioning the selected item just for fun, I um, don't know the use case for it, but it'd be quite cool if you had an app that did that. Um, what we do here is we have um, three buttons with invisible um, button backgrounds and invisible hovers as well. So if I hover over that, nothing's going to happen. And then I have a fourth button that I move around the, the page or the screen. Um, that's called button moving. Um, and so what we do for him is his various X, Y coordinates and on clicking each of these particular bits, if I click, if I should sh show you this first, click that, do an on select. I grab a whole different bunch of variables. So I'm using a timer control to ha handle the transition from the color and from the X coordinate. Um, and then I set my previous icon to be the, no, the value of it, what, is, what it was before. Um, my previous icon's X value, um, my previous icon's RGBs, and then set the new icons, um, the one that's been clicked, to be number three. For this one, it's one, two, three. And then my new X, my new RGBs, um, to be based on the color that I want to go to. Um, and then I start my timer control. So whenever you want to do a transition, you're going to want to have a timer, have your timer. This is hidden at the moment. So here he is, hidden up there. Um, at the at the end of the timer, the timer runs for 500 milliseconds. Um, at the end of the timer, I'm going to set my context variable to be false. And on clicking any of these items, I set my context variable to be true. And so the transition runs between true and false. So it always runs when it's true and stops when it's false. So the button that we have moving around Okay, so if it's false, um, I could change this around, but I haven't at the moment. I just have the the icon, the button sitting in the right space at the end of the timer control, just so I can have that as a variable if I want it. And then during the actual migration or moving of the button, I have um, a quick check to check that I haven't clicked the button, the same button twice. Um, so if it equals the same, so I don't need to do anything. Um, and then if my, what I then have is my previous icon number, so like a, a1 and then my new icon I'll click on is number three to a check to basically see which one's bigger um, that one's bigger that one's smaller um, and then based on the different actions I do my previous icons X coordinate and I take away um, my previous icon X minus my new icon X value which gives me the difference between the two and so I basically add that or minus that so left or right movements and then I time or multiply that by my timers of value and my duration. Um, so that does the speed of the transition. Um, that you could put a number in there if you wanted to, um, but I have that so it runs during the timer control. And then especially figuring out which, what is left, what is right, um, then which ones can be selected and which ones not. Then do exactly the same thing for the fill of the button. So I've got my starts false so my standard three colors for my three icons and then I have my transitions for my colors so exactly the same process but we have to do a, a nested if statement uh, for each one for the R the G and the B we keep the, the A as one all the time and then so what I'm having is if my new icon R is greater than in value so you've got 0 to 255 for an RGB color so if it's lower sorry greater than my previous one then it's my previous plus my difference between the two values and then multiply that by the, 
the time of value and time of duration divided by the time of duration to give a transition um, process so that we move slowly or quickly from 0 to 50 sort of thing um, or as the gap goes and same and exactly the same for if my icon that I want to get to is less than my previous icon then it's a minus uh, we do that for the R, G, the B um, and then that just transitions so that we can move across and then we go from a bluish to a greenish I should put some easing on here as well but I haven't done that yet um, but just showing you what you can do what's possible um, you might want to have that um, in your apps you may not need it um, this one's probably a safer option oops where do you go oh that's I've got that that one colored up I didn't change that one back that's okay um, there we go all right so there yeah, quick overview of how you can make buttons do cool things in your apps um, show you some different choices how you can make them work this is just standard stuff up the top here down here's a bit, a bit more funky um, but you can do it and it can work well so I hope that you, this has been helpful any questions just ask cheers thanks